One second, just can you hear? Can you hear me? Can you go into this one? All right, so we're we're good. Hey, sorry about that. A little bit of technical delays. We're back and we are still live here in Las Vegas, Nevada. We're at Full Spectrum Laser here uh, just behind the airport in Las Vegas, Nevada. If you're ever in your town, if you are in Vegas, make sure you stop by and see us sometime. Uh, mm -hmm. We've got a few things going on today. What are we talking about on the show today, Walker? So we're going to talk about jigs and things. Uh, what, what does that mean? Jigs and things. Well, Can you do a dance? Do a little jig? I want to see you do it again. I will do one jig. So we're going to talk about jigs, and jigs are setting up projects or specific uh, items that you want to do in a row, multiple projects where you want to just bust them out, keep them nice and straight. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to talk about the 12, what, the 12 days of making. Yep. And we're going to have 12 projects associated with those days, made by me. And we're going to answer all the questions that you guys have. And then we're going to talk to me about personalizing your laser. Okay, excellent. So we're going to get started here uh, and talk about our jig. Now, if we can go over to the uh, hobby laser camera real quick, you'll see that inside the laser, what we have here is this little uh, contraption. Now, I'll pull this out of the laser real quick so you can see what we have first is we have our jig daddy. Now, the jig daddy is simply just a little square that we have that we stick up in the corner of the laser to kind of keep everything square. Pen now, pending. Uh, is, is the, I do have a patent pending on this jig that I'm doing. So now, what we did is we created, if we can go back to this uh, camera here, Charles, uh, this jig that we have created, basically, um, what we'll do is we'll use this uh, grid to lay out our Christmas tags. Now, these tags, if you can see, uh, it's a little blown out. Uh, we'll pull up one of the black ones so it has a little better contrast. Uh, we've engraved Happy Holidays on our little tags here. Now, we want to put the to and from on the back of all those tags on who these uh, grid gifts are for. So what these um, tags can do, they can slip right here inside the jig, and then we can engrave on all of them multiple times. So what we're going to do is we have Walker go ahead and put this in uh, the machine and lay out um, a few of these um, tags here, so that we can start um, doing a quick job. Now, <clears throat> basically, if you can uh, go over to my uh, computer screen here, Charles, what we have is this file here. Now, this is essentially a square where all those tags can fit in. So what I've done is I have gone and created our to and from on the back. Now, this is for Steve and my brother. Um, imaginary brother. My brother's real name is Charlie, but Stephen is going to send a bunch of gifts to all these people. Now, it'd be a pain to have to go and make every single tag one after another. So what he's going to do is we're going to make 12 tags all at once. So with that, um, the best part about it is once you do these 12 tags, you can just come into the file again real quick and just change mom to, you know, Aunt Betty, you know? But mom would be upset if we didn't send her one of these. So. Um, with this tag, you can knock out a bunch of things. So once you save this, there's a few parts of the file you want to set up that are essential. And one of them is this starting point right up here. Now we mark it with a little uh, dot section like this so that you know where the uh, laser can start and where it needs to. Now what we can show you kind of uh, for reference, if we go back over to the Muse inside where uh, 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 Walker's working there, um, I think those are backwards, Walker. Are they backwards? Yep, should be flipped around. Um, no, that one's fine. That one's uh, asymmetrical. The ones on the left, uh, the holes should be to the right. I apologize for not mentioning that. Uh, so as you can see, those fit right into those holes there. Now, all we have to do to make sure this lines up is right in the top left-hand corner, which I can see is just a little tough to see. There's just a little mark there that uh, Walker just pointed at. And what that mark is going to do is allow us to put um, our project in the right spot, the right location. So once we have these in here, uh, basically all Walker's going to do is make sure that acrylic is uh, tucked up nice and tight up against the uh, Jig Daddy there. Now the Jig Daddy you can use just a ruler at the top, you can use something, but basically you want something that just separates yourself a little bit from the edge. And as you can see we have the honeycomb out uh, from the laser which just lets us have the, uh, I'll use the edge of the, uh, the floor bottom um, to kind of get a nice square edge. Now, the reason why you're doing all this and you're taking this advantage is basically to make sure that your um, design is square and aligned uh, each time so that when your starting point is marked, you'll have no problem uh, going forward. All right, so now what Walker's gonna do is he's gonna jog the laser head over 
to the little bullseye um, that is over on the thing. Now, when driving the laser like this, don't forget you can always hit unlock and move it over um, with your hands uh, hand free. Uh, it'll home itself and go right back to the position that you've uh, done it by hand. Now, what Walker's going to do is put the um, speed to the um, to the uh, what do you call it? The uh, scroll there just to the slow walk. So the little walking guy on Muse is going to go slow walk, and he's just going to dial that dot in. Now, in Retina Engrave 2, uh, it shows us where our dot location is. Now, uh, Walker's just going to get a quick focus there with the uh, focus billet. And then if we go back over to my screen, Charles, uh, we'll show you how we're going to put this into Retina Engrave. As you can see here, we got uh, Retina Engrave. I'll just pull up um, the file here. Now, I'm just going to drag it over. Now, since we're only doing engravings, uh, and this is something to kind of keep in mind always, you don't need all the data here. So I'm only going to take the raster data uh, here in Retina Engrave because all we're doing is an engraving. Could you throw us down in the bottom right hand corner of the Charles? Appreciate it, sir. Alright, so here we go. Now, right now you can see we have uh, the bounding box. Oh, whoops, I think I put the wrong one in there. Let me kind of back the finder. I don't know if that was the right one. Okay, sorry about that little delay. Okay, so our binding box and our font edges. Now, we made that vector line in Illustrator yellow, and here's the reason why we made it yellow. So we're gonna take this black and white threshold, and I just happen to know it's about 210, but you see, when you slide it down, get down below, you're gonna lose all those yellow lines. You're gonna be left with just the black lines you need to engrave. It's a really easy trick so that you can use a binding box and um, still do good engravings. But we're gonna take this back up above so we can still see our yellow line for just a second because we need to just zoom in up over here real quick so that oops, you can kind of see what's going on. Now, this is red dot right here represents where our laser head is, correct? So all we need to do is put our little bullseye right here over top of our laser dot. So once that laser dot and that bullseye are lined up, we will have what we'd consider a pretty perfect alignment here. Now, uh, what I noticed I did on this, and which will have just a little bit of an issue, is my file is hanging over the bottom of this just a little bit. Oops, let me stop dragging around. So, let's see at the bottom here, this file has a little bit of overhang outside of the work area. Now it's not going to allow me to start the job here. I've adjusted this in Illustrator so it has the bottom of the binding box taken out. But as you can see, we'll run a uh, outline right here. And if we can go to the Muse uh, real quick, Charles, uh, when the outline runs, you'll notice, oops, oh, because it's outside the perimeter. I'm not going to be able to run the outline. I apologize. Same reason we'll be able to run the job. Um, but this will align your object real quick. Now if you give me just a moment, what we'll do is we'll just adjust this file uh, in just a second and we'll get it ran. Mm -hmm. if you want, we can answer questions. Yeah. We have a couple, Why don't we have questions. A couple questions. Then maybe yeah. talk about uh, what you do instead of a jig uh, as well. Well, instead of a jig, um, what's awesome with the Muse is it gets rid of the whole concept of using a jig. You don't need a jig because you can use the camera function itself to just, you could literally just throw those tags in there drag and drop that same file over and over and then adjust it to however those tags are. So it's a little, it's a little off put with uh, the Muse. You don't need it, um, but for our pro users, uh, jigs, they use jigs all the time, say that they're marking pins, something of that sort, they want to do a lot at a time, then they can just make those jigs uh, and then run the whole file all at once. And that is what's cool, and that's why the Muse has a camera, so you don't need to set up that file specifically. Because sometimes jigs just throw people off. They, they're like, I have to create something to run my own job. It's uh, So that's what's really cool about the, the camera feature on the Muse. So what <coughs> questions we got? So Tammy from Norwalk, Connecticut. Any advice on securing fabric in oh, the Muse? Great question. That is good. So. Tammy, we could uh, tape the fabric down. We could weigh the fabric down. We have just little chunks of metal that you can just weigh the fabric down. Let's say your design's 10 inches by 10 inches. You cut a piece of fabric that's 12 by 12, and then just weigh it down on each side. 
Now you can weigh it down, tape it down. I've actually seen some people lay it over the honeycomb and then have little steer weights that when they get in the way, it just hits it out of the way. And I thought that was really cool. All right, we also have a question from James in Tempe, Arizona. Do I, do I have to have a riser to work the rotor? James, you do not need the riser to use the rotor. Especially with the Muse or any hobby laser, it, it's not needed, but it depends on your application. It definitely makes it easier if your application fits inside the uh, riser. If it doesn't fit inside the riser, you do not need it. Say you're doing a baseball bat and you have a longer lens, then you won't need that riser bottle. But say it fits within the riser, it's going to make things a lot easier. You're not going to have to make your own riser. I've seen people make their own riser, and yeah, the file's ready. All right. Oh, yep, I guess the file's ready. So uh, if you want, we can look uh, again, uh, just so you don't think there's any uh, movie magic going on or anything. Uh, I just adjusted this file just slightly so it fits in the uh, work bed correctly. Um, again, I'm just going to take the threshold down. Um, I just happen to know that 210 will remove the yellow just from color theory. Uh, and then what we're left here is just what we have now. We're going to run the perimeter really quick. And if you cut to the muse, you'll see on the perimeter, which might be a little bit difficult with the gantry in the way, but you can see that we are running the edge of that perimeter pretty perfectly. So we're going to stop the uh, perimeter run there, and then uh, we're just going to adjust our settings real quick. Now for this one, uh, as you can see on the one side, we went with a little bit of lighter engraving. We're going to do this at um, five, or sorry, 250 DPI, because that's all we really need for this. We're going to keep our power um, pretty high. We're going to keep it at 60%, but then our, our raster speed, we're actually going to slow down just a little bit to 70%. Now, when you slow down, basically, just like if you were driving, flying, um, driving a boat, anything, uh, speed and accuracy go hand in hand. So the slower your laser head goes, the more accurate it is. Uh, reversely, the faster it goes, um, you know, the least accurate it is when it's doing intricate things. Now, if you're doing a solid fill logo or just some, um, I don't know, some a very uh, basic engraving, 250 DPI is more yeah, than you're enough. Not, you're not going to notice not gonna really anything. Notice anything. When you're starting to do text though and little things, you kind of want to bump it up in text, yeah. uh, to, uh, to 500. Now you can see with this, we have about 18 point text on this. With that, you really don't need to go any lower than 250 DPI. So I got the settings here gone, and we're just going to get this job started, hit play. As you can see, it takes about 10, 15 seconds to get going, and here we are. Uh, and then I guess we'll just fact check this a little bit and see how we're doing as far as alignment. Looks like it's just a little blown out from all the lights mm -hmm. inside there. All better? Yeah. Looks pretty good though. Looks like we're pretty aligned. And uh, we'll check in on that in a little bit in the show, but essentially that's uh, that's your jig. Now with the uh, with the jig a few things to remember is you want to be able to get your pieces out of the jig. So if you have a square, like let's say you're making a jig for something like this. These are a couple things we picked up just from the craft store, these little pieces of wood that already have hanging things on it. They're great for Christmas gifts and other little knickknacks and things. These cost a couple bucks each, so it saves you the time for ha having to make them yourself. But uh, with something like this, um, if it's a square, you want to be able to get your finger in there and pop it out. So make sure when yeah. you're making the jig, you leave a little bit of room to get a finger or a tool in there to pop out your pieces from your jig. Cause it's a little bit of a pain uh, when you're pulling things out. You can also combine the jig together so it's all one piece. So Absolutely. you don't have to have spaces in your material uh, as the jig is. So. Absolutely. All right, that's great. So uh, what we're going to do now is uh, move on to our next topic. Uh, and with that, we're just going to, what, what's this? Just, is this for Walker? Can't, you shouldn't really pass the work. We're live on, we're live on Facebook right now. We're just, okay, we're live. One second, right we're, uh, we're, we'll, we're gonna read this. No, oh, oh, the contest winner, Gabriel Hildreth. Congratulations. Congratulations. I Congratulations to uh, Gabriel. Um, your sales associate will be contacting you uh, pretty soon uh, this week. Uh, probably today, if not today, tomorrow. And uh, we'll figure out which one of the uh, lenses you'd like to get. Uh, speaking of lenses, uh, why would someone need a different lens for their Muse Hobby Laser? That's a good question. Hmm. What so, do you want to do with that? Uh, depending on what you want to do, you could change the output of the laser itself. So if you have a different lens, you can change that focus 
and say you want a tighter rest or smaller spot size, you can get a 1.5 inch lens for your news that's going to make you have a lot clearer rasters or you can do the uh, 5 inch lens which is my personal favorite uh, you can do the inside of a bowl or thick foam something of that sort so so what you're saying is uh, with the 5 inch lens you have a uh, thicker uh, uh, effective area with the lens while you don't have as much power you could do things of multiple heights because you have an effective area that's a little bit thicker yeah you're drawing that point and uh, kind of stretching it in a way and making it so its um, focus isn't so focused that it, it's got an overall uh, power. So if I was doing engraving on, let's say, Yeti tumblers or something where I was doing uh, high detail uh, engraving, I'd probably want a 1.5 inch lens. Yeah, 1.5 inch lens, um, that's going to give you the, it's also going to have a smaller focus range, so you got to keep that in mind if there is some sort of cup with a uh, handle or something of that sort. Gotcha. So just keep that in mind. If you have the smaller uh, spot size with a 1.5 inch lens, you get a more accurate and more specific um, engraving, but your surface area, your surface plane, is going to have to be much more flat. It's going to have a much thinner uh, depth of focus uh, for that lens. Your standard 2-inch lens has about a quarter inch of effective space, so about the thickness of uh, this piece of wood, uh, you're in focus uh, with, your, uh, uh, with your focus billet. Now, that's about half the distance above and below your focus billet, so if there's a little bit of variance in your material, you'll be okay, but with a 5-inch lens, there's a, vi a wide, it's about an inch, right, with five yeah, inch yeah. lens, about an inch of effective area. So um, you can imagine you have something that's uh, one inch difference, either like the back of a guitar neck, uh, the inside of a bowl, or anything like that, and you'll have still an in-focus image across that entire plane. Yeah, it's really cool. So there's uh, Jay from Facebook asks, he says that he's noticed that I focused the laser while it was on the acrylic uh, jig rather than the material itself. That's a great question, That is Jay. a great question. That's a, I, I would say that was maybe a slight oversight. That, that is a slight oversight, but they're both 3 mil material. Right? Actually, uh, that is accurate too. So, not quite accurate. No. This is 2 close. mil material. It's very, very close. Very so, close. the effective area of the lens, you'll notice, we'll pull one out at the end. It'll still be very much in focus. Um, I'm not too worried about it. You have about an eighth inch of play on either side of that focus range to have a good engraving. Outside of that, it won't look so good, but that's why you can do slightly rounded surface with the same lens. Absolutely, but you're absolutely right, Jay. That's a, that was a good catch. Uh, Alan from Facebook asked, uh, are we going to do any of these type of shows for the Pro Series? Actually, that's a great question, Alan. Next week's show is going to be all about Pro Machines. So all of our examples that we do, all of our samples we do, will all be cut on a Pro Series and 90 watt machine. So don't think we forgot about you. We just uh, do a lot of our things on Hobby and news because we just sell more of them than any other laser that we sell. And it fits conveniently in our little lab that we have here in the back of the offices. Okay, so um, what we're going to do now is we're talk about a few of these uh, great projects that we've been uh, creating for Christmas. Um, we have the 12 days of Christmas that we have, and yeah. we're making projects for each of them. Everything ranging from Christmas toppers, holiday cards, what else are great projects um, coming up that we haven't launched yet? Was that a little elf guy? Oh, we got the elf on the shelf. We've got some great accessories guy. for your elf on the shelf. We've got a uh, so a rocking chair and a little thing uh, for that. We've got, oh, the uh, uh, Santa's setup. It's going to be a sleigh that serves milk and cookies for Santa. So you have the greatest setup for Santa when he comes to give presents for your kids. It's a great little project. That will be our last project we release uh, about a week before Christmas. Um, but uh, we have a lot of those coming up. Uh, we've got a great question here from Ryan on Facebook. Uh, Walker, I think you got a good answer for it. Uh, we've got um, uh, a guy trying to do uh, acrylic. He's got clear cast acrylic. Uh, his name is Ryan. He's from Facebook. He's trying to do um, photo engraving mm -hmm. on clear acrylic. Photo engraving on clear acrylic. I know the oh. holy grail. Yeah. Uh, he, you are you have you are, you are reaching for the stars, and uh, we appreciate it. We're going to help you get as close to them as possible. Uh, the, yeah. There's a few things to consider with acrylic. Though, yeah, right? There's a lot of variables when it comes to uh, exact power settings for acrylic, especially clear acrylic and photo engraving. Yeah. So you're going to really want to dial in your power settings. It's always nice to start off with what you think is good for a basic raster. And also, it depends on what kind of output you want. If it's a photo engraving, if you want it a little deep, if you're filling it with paint, something of that sort, 
it just really depends on what kind of output you What's want. a great way someone can figure out and test uh, how they use the material? So we have a vector, well, we have, we have a material, material test. Yeah, yeah, material test, yeah. So if you want, Ryan, uh, and I, I think a few of our comments on Facebook today have this uh, link there, and uh, Ruben will throw it in the comments here on the uh, Facebook feed. Uh, but we have a material test on our Laser 101 section of our website. Now what the material test is, is a one inch square, which uh, basically allows you to kind of feel out the settings for your material. Uh, it has a perfect gradient going from uh, complete black to complete white, going from the center out to the edge. And basically what that allows you to do is kind of test and see uh, the reaction of your gradients in your photo. Now, if there's ever an instance where the quality of photo is going to matter for an engraving, it's certainly going to be on clear acrylic in a photo or dithered uh, engraving. It's essential that your engraving has a high level of contrast, that there is distinguishment between the subject and the background, uh, be it with focus, lighting, uh, color change, uh, something. Uh, your best bet is to have a picture of someone with a white background or a clear blue sky or something, if you're trying to take a picture of your dog in the woods and then engrave it on clear acrylic, that's going to be very difficult. Yeah. That's gonna be, it's going to look... You, you, you Photoshop it a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, this is, and we talk about this in what? In the ebook, right? Yeah. Uh, we have an ebook and a few other things that uh, we have that you can kind of check out, and it talks about uh, doctoring your photos for photo engraving, and you know, oh, we have a link below. Mm -hmm. Links mm -hmm. below again. Uh, we love it when the links are below. That's always good. Charles, he's a genius. Oh, when he gets, he's, he's, he's inside my brain. He just links it and puts it right here. Okay, so moving forward, um, do we have any more questions from so, oh. Norbert from Facebook? Uh, what are the capabilities of cutting slash etching aluminum, brass, and steel? Oh. Well, Norbert, with steel, any sort of metal, with the CO2 laser, it's not capable of doing anything if it's bare metal. Now, if it's anodized, you can remove the anodization. You can also remove paint from top of uh, metal materials, but uh, it's just bare metal is not going to do anything. It gets absorbed. The power from the CO2 gets absorbed through the metal. Now, if you checked out last week, we talked about fiber lasers. Absolutely. Our fiber lasers are systems that will mark metal. They'll engrave deeply into metal and also cut thin metal. Absolutely. If you want to check that out, you can uh, check out our Facebook feed uh, for last week's Wednesdays with Walker, and you'll see the uh, fiber uh, topic up in the topic above with our friend Frankie. Oh, yeah, Frankie, our fiber expert here at uh, Full Spectrum. Oh, here's uh, from Portland, Maine, the great state of Maine, just starting to get unbearably cold up there. One of my best friends, Ben from Maine. Uh, let's fix the mic here. Uh, let's. Uh, can we discuss the difference between relative positioning and absolute positioning, and which is better for the memes? What a great question. We get so many inquiries, support, get so many questions about absolute and relative positioning. Basically, do you want to take relative position? Yeah, I'll take relative. Okay. So relative positioning is going to be how the old lasers work. It's about relative to where your laser head is. It doesn't matter where the laser head is in the uh, in the work area. It's going to start the job from there in the upper left hand corner. So it's relative to where the laser head is. Now absolute is. Well, absolute is uh, kind of the opposite of that, right? Absolute is where the laser is in reference to the laser bed. Uh, what's great about this, as you can see in RE2, is it, it'll show you the absolute positioning of your laser in your laser bed. Now, this is great for a few reasons. Um, one, efficiency of use of material. You get a lot more use out of material just because you have a lot more options of like where to start your things, uh, start your projects. And you couldn't do things, well, I guess you could do things like the jig um, alignment with uh, relative positioning, but you would have to do it in a way which is one more extra step. Uh, jigs are actually, uh, with relative positioning, it's the reason why you do relative positioning. Mm -hmm. right? Now what's beautiful about absolute positioning is that you have a camera on me using soon on all of our pro machines will have cameras as well and using absolute positioning you can actually trace or take a picture of what's on the bed and then absolutely put your position where it is on the reference uh, that's probably the easiest way to remember it yeah it's absolutely where it is in the software absolutely it's absolutely so yeah. Jason from Facebook oh, asks, has anyone ever used the muse to remove rust from tools or other objects great question and I have yeah and it it works. Works great, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You can do some cool stuff, some cool antiquing stuff with, uh, you know, antiques and yeah. all. Yeah. And that. if you think about it, if you find something, uh, maybe something old that's rusted up, you can actually uh, engrave away a pattern, a graphic name, or anything, and personalize a lot of really cool old antiques with your CO2 laser. 
Yeah. Um, walking into a Goodwill, Michaels, or any place that has old stuff or in it, or crafty stuff, or just yeah, here in Nevada, you can just wander around the desert for a few miles, and you'll find something. They'll some, open some, weird. something weird <laughs> is laying around out there. It's uh, it's it's consistent as gravity when you walk around out there. Uh, but like I said, if you pick up anything, that's the best thing about lasers. Probably is uh, anything you have, you can enhance, you can personalize, you can really make your own. Yeah, same Jason from Facebook asked says his muse is coming tomorrow. That's what awesome, Jason. What is the first project to run on your machine? Would the 101 course have an option? Would the 101 course have an option? So your 101 courses would be a good option. So there's a few things you can start. There's one, there's the blast off project, uh, which you can use a portion of your uh, box and make a neat little rocket. That's available on Laser 101. We also have uh, nine laser lessons that walk you through um, using your laser from engraving to cutting to engraving then cutting to more complex things like notching things together. Uh, yeah. Also, we have a pack of Romark material, right? So yeah, you, you have, have the Romark, you can jump into all those projects that are farther along than 101. If you're a little confident, which if I got a, like anything like that, I don't read the instructions. I yeah, just I'm go all the way. using it right away, right? Yeah. So As you can see below, this is like a. Uh, actually, we have one of them right here. You can make uh, a little stand for your muse with some of your Romark material. Now, this is great to store pens and pencils and your um, a couple of the tools for muse and store your focus billets. Um, it's got a little place down below where you can put USB drives and other things. Uh, but you can make that right out of the box. Um, there's. I mean, really, it's like Christmas morning when you get your muse. You have everything you need to start making right away. Yeah. Feel free to choose whichever one you want. Oh, we got uh, Robert R. from the great state of New York uh, up in Rochester. Um, I have the material testing template from your website, but I don't understand what to do with it. Can you explain how it works? Not a problem. So basically, you have the material test. Um, and I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll briefly discuss this right now, but Walker will go through a complete material test uh, when he does his weekly build uh, tomorrow or Friday. How about that? Basically with the material test, uh, and this is explained on the website a bit if anyone wants to get more detail, but you want to run that material test file with a certain power setting. Once you've ran it once, you kind of want to assess how that looks. If it's too light, if it's too dark, and then use the test file to kind of dial back uh, your settings or you know tune them up a bit depending on what look you're going for. Transition. Oh, I shouldn't read the word transition. I think we're just transitioning. Whoops. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, jump away and go to a quick word from our sponsors. Having problems drilling down your project? Are you getting all tangled up trying to create that amazing concept? Are you finding yourself cutting outside the lines in life? Are you tired of years of waiting only to receive a lemon? Well, don't be sour. Find your muse instead. You can take the hassle out of making with the amazing Muse Hobby Laser. Look at all these incredible things you can make. Uh-oh, no cash, no credit, still building up that five-figure income? Wish you could get the Muse for free? Not to worry. Full Spectrum Laser is giving one away. We're giving your school, makerspace, or home studio a chance to get a free Muse Hobby Laser. Just submit a short video on what you would create with your Muse. Don't keep spinning out of control. Check out the link below. For official rules and contest submissions, visit our website, fslaser.com. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. You can win your very own Muse laser cutter. Do you already have a Muse? Do you already have a Pro Series machine? Do you already have a fiber laser? Not a big deal. You know what's better than one laser? Two lasers. Three no, lasers. Three lasers? Four? I mean, you can really can't have too many lasers. We have about a million of them here. And it seems like I can never get on a laser. It's always being used. So you literally can never have enough lasers. Now, uh, to enter the contest, make a quick short video. All you need is a cell phone. Take your cell phone out, take a quick selfie video, have someone shoot it for you, send it in. It doesn't have to be long, it can be a few seconds, it can be a few minutes, whatever you like. Just tell us what you're going to make with it. Tell us what you want to do. Tell us why you deserve a Muse on Christmas. And uh, we'll pick our winner in what, a week? And we'll announce um, our winner next week uh, with uh, Wednesday on Wednesdays, yeah? I hope I win. You hope? Uh, <laughs> Walker wins, just know it's probably rigged, and we apologize in advance, but yes. we'll keep an eye on it. Okay, so what do we got next? Um, okay, so this is a topic I'm actually really excited about. Um, I was really excited to see what Walker came up with. Um, everyone wants their laser to be 
people their lasers. Yes. They want it to be their own. They want to they want to own it. They don't want their laser to look like everyone else's laser. So how do you personalize your laser to give it a little bit of flair to maybe advertise your business to maybe as you're posting on your company's Instagram feed of the wonderful products you're making with the laser? How do you give yourself just a little bit of extra flair? How do you? Well, let's see, <laughs> Walker. So. Like when people buy something, they always wanted theirs, and like the drones, I see people have the Mavic drones, and they they wrap them with skins, make them cool. So what I designed this morning was just I got you. All right. Just a little. If we go to the camera, just little pieces that you can cut out. So this one is with the Romark white message board material. You can do that, leave notes, say this is in a school, leave the note for the day, or like that says, sign in. Whatever your situation may be, maybe your maker space. And then we have this bottom piece that's just gonna go around the button and the touch panel. And it's gonna give you a little uh, reminders of what the button does. A lot of people have questions on what that button does. And uh, just wraps around the screen, tells you the e-stops there. Just reminders, you can also change those at anything that you want to, anything else. And then also we have the, uh, the billet holder. We like to keep it inside of the machine so it doesn't get lost, knocked down, anything of that sort. Uh, and you can cut these in any material that you like. Again, you can personalize this, take this idea and just run with it. <clears throat> you can do the other side and make a rules list, like you better clean the laser now. Uh, rule 10, clean laser again, and Sounds yeah. It's a great place to put a little bit of a oh, branding yeah. here in the head. Yeah, branding. Uh, or just your maker space plus laser, anything of that sort. So just these little things you can cut out. You just use double-sided sticky tape or even just the dab of hot glue to keep them on there. I think you might have put this one uh, in upside down. How did I even... How did I miss that? <laughs> Let's go back to this real quick and take a look. Uh, just uh, for quality's sake. Looks like we're pretty straight. Looks like all of them fit in our jig pretty well. Looks like all of them marked really well. Um, let's pop one out to take a look at one. Um, but nice, straight, even marking. Looks pretty good, actually. And that's 250 DPI, yeah? Yeah, 250 DPI. Uh, this whole job ran in about, you know, it's about 12 minutes. So if you can imagine, you can make about one of these tags a minute if you do it jig style. If you had to do one, take it out, and put it back in, you'd probably be, you know, you know, two or three minutes of time. Now, that doesn't seem like a big deal until you're doing uh, 30 or 40 of these. Uh, this is a great upsell, too, if you have any company. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're making. Uh, being able to personalize tags and things um, for us, uh, for their customers, is, is a great object. Like, it doesn't matter if you own a escape room or a bar or a yeah, make cards or whatever um, making anything for your space or offering that service to other companies that could offer uh, that to the space that's one of the great things about uh, owning a laser is the uh, your ability to be an entrepreneur with it um, many times when we're out whether we're just going to grab something to eat having a beer uh, maybe in the mall or someplace else we see so many companies that if they just had a laser system they could add a little touch to whatever, whatever they add. Whether it's personalizing wine glasses, uh, putting someone's initials on the back of an object you already buy or sell. A lot of woodworkers, uh, we actually have a great woodworker out in North Carolina, Johnny Brook, who uses the Muse, uh, not necessarily as his primary tool, like he uses, I don't want to say real tools, but he uses real manly tools. Like he's got saws and uh, jigsaws and uh, planers and all these huge tools in his uh, workshop. But he uses Muse hobby lasers to put a lot of details on things to engrave a little portion of his uh, woodworking projects or the lid to something or you know the back of yeah, something. Yeah, I, I definitely think the laser adds to any project, even if it's outside of the laser realm. Just adding that little touch with the laser that's so clean and so quick is what's really, really awesome about lasers. It doesn't need to be the whole project that's a laser project. Do you have the other version of the uh, the top um, of the, the little thing you made, the little? That's what I was looking for. We got Brandon A. from uh, Las Vegas, hometown representing Brandon. Come by and see us sometime here at the uh, shop. Um, this ask, uh, where did you get the uh, material for your custom uh, Muse mini sign on the laser head? Uh, how do you get uh, white text like that? Actually, this is really interesting. Um, Romark, uh, Romark's a company that makes a ton of different uh, products. Uh, they're owned by Johnson Plastics Plus, uh, which has even more products. But essentially, what this product is, if Walker shows it, the front has this very thin layer of white on it, and then on the back, 
it's actually all black. Most of the material is that black on the back, and the thin white on the top essentially simply etch off. If you look at the uh, side on the head of the laser, that's uh, got a white backing with a thin blue uh, on the front, and we use that material all the time. And you know what? I found that other piece of blue material we were looking for. It's right oh. underneath the, right underneath there. We found it. Um, mouse pad. Yeah, it's a good mouse pad. Um, that said, um, uh, Romark makes all kinds of materials. Actually, do we have one of those? Maker pad. Uh, do you have, I, don't, I think it's in the office that has all the different. Oh, uh, no, not the Maker Pack. Um, essentially, Romark has, and I could be misquoting here, hundreds, but it could be less than that, of different uh, materials as far as black on white, white on black. Gold on black, silver on black, bronze on black. Like, it's overwhelming how many options. It's yeah. really. It's all, I don't want to say too much because as an artist, like you want, you want every, every option. option. You want every option. But it's almost so much that like once you find yours, you could spend a day looking through every other product they have because there's just such breadth and depth. If you're looking for tumblers to engrave, little tchotchkes to engrave, uh, they, I mean they have it all. Uh, but it's a great place to get materials for your laser. It's great. I. I there's not another place that offers that many things for laser production. And there's really no other place on the web that offers specifically things just for laser. So when you buy from them, you, you know that they're selling it with the thought that you're going to use your laser. And they have one of our lasers in the shop, too, but they also have a Boss laser, a Trotec, an Epilog. Like they have every laser on the market in their shop, and they test it on every single one. And they also provide a lot of settings and uh, material suggestions with their packets uh, when they come in. Johnson Plastics Plus has a great set of resources online for getting the most out of your materials. It's really why we partner with them and, and feel so strongly and confident using the materials because they just make quality products designed specifically for lasers. We, we love it. And that's why we include in every single Muse and Hobby laser the Maker Pack, which comes free. Do 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 do. do. Uh, but that'll come with every single uh, Muse and Hobby laser uh, that goes out. Um, looks like, oh, Dave McGee, welcome back to the show. Appreciate you watching again. Got a quick question from uh, RE3. Uh, what file outputs will be available to export and sharing? Will there be any way to back up the projects outside of RE3? Great question. The answer is absolutely. Now, RE3, when you save in different, um, what would you call it? Uh, I guess we call those screens or sets Projects. or the different projects. Each project can be saved, but then when you export the project, you can save that in an SVG and as a PDF. So you can share those files as PDFs or SVGs. Um, it's and inherently, it's a design software first with laser capabilities with it. So exporting was something we had a lot of feedback on with RE2 importing different uh, files, and also like the ability to share files and recall files. And being able to recall just, if you just ran, if you, let's say you run two files all day at work, like you want both of those files always saved, on always hand. available, on hand, always. Well, we wanted to make sure that was absolutely available in, in RE3, and you'll see a lot of those type of improvements with, with it. Question from Alan on Facebook, which is actually really good. He said, he just cut these and then engraved them from a single piece of material. Absolutely. Why is a jig better? Okay, so you can go to a place like Michael's and buy a case of these, uh, which you have like, you know, I don't know how many, you got, probably got 50 or 100 in this thing. And I want to say this costs like five bucks, eight bucks at the most. Um, why do you need to cut it instead of it? In my opinion, um, to make all those, it would have probably taken me an hour or two, and that would have taken me two or three sheets of material, which the time and the material would have been more than, than that Just eight bucks. Yeah, so um, when you buy things like that, or if you buy like little some things like this, like this is a little pre assembled, nice little tchotchke. I want to say this retails for $1.99. To me, getting a handful of these and be able to do a quick engraving on it is yeah. infinitely easier than cutting and making each individual one. Yeah, I think the jig, it, it makes sense for pre-existing objects, right? Absolutely. So if you're making an object, you probably don't need to do no. it. But, but let, let's say you're doing two sides. Out. Yeah. Let's say two you were sides. doing this and you engraved all of them and cut them out all on one side. Well, that's terrific. Now, what? how do you get to the other side? How do you do massive engravings on this side? Well, the jig could come in handy then. So let's say you cut them all out, you jig them out. You could probably actually use the same material you just cut them out with, keep the material in its space, maybe tape it down, and then take those things out and turn it upside down, and you've literally just created a jig. Like, it's yeah. really the same thing. And it's really easy with the Muse, it has the camera, so you jig, really, you don't need it, but it does make it easier. Yeah, we could have taken a picture of the bed and aligned it with that, but the 
I mean, even though the camera process takes about 30 seconds, it's not very long. Uh, the jig and the precision of the jig and, you know, with a camera taking a picture that is on multiple levels, like you're always going to have a slight level of error with uh, stitching automatically. Just to avoid any type of issue or any type of uncertainty, like the jig can just take a lot of stress out of mass producing. If you're only making 10 of something, no, this is probably not for you. Mm -hmm. If you're making 50 of something, this is certainly something you want to save, you know, an hour or two of your time by doing. It's certainly and something. Definitely, if you're a pro user. Oh yeah, if you're a pro, and we don't mean as a professional. We just mean if you're a pro series, a pro 24, pro 36, pro 48 user, you're only using relative terms with RE2 or excuse me, RE1. Jigs are almost essential if you're doing mass production. Or Lamar from Facebook, can you post the name of the material source you mentioned? Absolutely. Uh, Ruben will post uh, right below the speed right now. Uh, basically, if you go to Johnson Plastics Plus backslash uh, FSL, uh, not only uh, we get 10% off as for being a full spectrum laser uh, user, but uh, you'll get linked right into uh, their Johnson Plastics Plus points program, which as you get materials, you just build up points, kind of like you do at a grocery store, and you get free material after you buy material. It's uh, I mean, it's kind of great. So Amber from Facebook asks, why doesn't a Pro Series get one of those free starter packs? Well, we thought about that, Amber, and guess what? We're going to start doing that with Pro Series. Now, we're not going to be able to do a backlog of every single person who ever ordered a Pro Series, but starting early next year, we're actually going to be setting out a four-pack, I'm sorry, actually, it's a five-pack uh, with Pro Series, which actually have larger sheets. Uh, they're actually going to do, do we have any of the large two-level uh, Over there. We might have one over there in the, in the, in the stacks. But uh, you'll actually get uh, sheets that are twice as big as the ones they got with me so that you can take uh, more advantage of your large bed size on your Pro Machine. And we have projects to go with that as well. Absolutely. Uh, so you'll see those in early uh, 2018. Okay, fra Fran from Eureka, California. I, uh, am I allowed to engrave copyrighted images like Wonder Woman for personal gifts and friends? This is a great question uh, and a question we actually get a lot. Um, I used to deal with this a lot, making a lot of videos and what can be allowed in a video and what logos and things. And the rule of thumb is to keep it very simple. And I am not a lawyer, I should say that at the beginning. I'm not giving legal advice, nor should you take any of the things I'm about to suggest as heart and truths and go forth with a business plan based on them. You should do your homework about copyright laws, uh, copyright infringement, uh, and fair use. That said, if you're not making money on something, i.e. if you're cutting out Wonder Woman logos and then going down to Venice Beach and hawking Wonder Woman keychains, yeah, you're you're setting yourself up to get in trouble. If you're cutting out uh, Los Angeles Laker logos and selling them outside the game, yeah, you're definitely like yeah. they're definitely you're definitely getting in trouble. Um, same thing with any NFL team, uh, anyone's name. Um, let's say you like you like Shepard Ferry and Obey, and you downloaded some of his posters, engraved them, and then sold them. Um, he Back like home. he. He is not going to be happy. He's going to send Andre the Giant after you. Like things are going to happen. So the basic rule of thumb is: if you make money off of it, you can do it. If you don't make money off of it, do whatever it, you do want. Do Have fun with it. Absolutely. Like uh, we engrave things that are copyrighted all the time. So we're actually going to do a nice little build to celebrate Star Wars Day tomorrow uh, with a little bit of a fun way to do the opening scrolls to Star Wars, which we don't necessarily uh, infringe any copyrights, but it's definitely something that is an ode to Star Wars, like it's unmistakably Star Wars-ish, uh, but we wouldn't use the Star Wars logo or anything uh, mm -hmm. a promotional thing. That's another thing to keep in mind. Don't use the Wonder Woman logo to promote your business. Don't use um, anything like that to promote your business. So if you're making money from it through promotion or you're making money of it through sales, you're in sticky waters. Now there's a lot of things that have open source fair use which you might not think of like Every patent, you, if you look on Google, Google Patents, you can find the patent to everything from plastic toy guns to your favorite machine to headphones to guitars. Um, those are all free use because they're um, in fair use. Uh, things that are older than, I believe, 50 years. Again, don't quote me on these dates. But older things that are in free use are, um, I believe they're called, Scott, quote me on here, open market, open fair use. Public domain? Public domain. domain. That's exactly what it's called. When they're in public domain, such as like, uh, if you want to use Beethoven's Fifth Symphony in a music video, you absolutely can because that is in public domain now. No one's gonna I don't think he'll care. He doesn't care, nor does his family, no one cares. But if you use Michael Jackson's thriller, you know, Tito's coming after you. Like the family's gonna come and they're gonna want money for you using uh, Michael Jackson's song Just the thing. Yeah, um, it's the same it's no different uh, with uh, logos and things. Um, what else do we have? Any other questions from John, can you talk about using a laser for 3D? Um, 
Okay, so 3D engraving with lasers. I think Glowforge likes to make a big announcement that they are a 3D uh, 3D laser printer. Cutter. 3D laser. What do they call them? 3D laser cutter. Whatever. Um, you're you're using a laser to vaporize material, so you're intrinsically taking things away. As soon as you engrave anything away, without being too much of a smart aleck, you, you are you are absolutely three-dimensionally engraving. Now, when you dither something and you have a gradient and some of the things are, are engraved high, some of them are engraved low, um, that is absolutely 3D engraving. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, technically the, called a relief. Yeah, um, and um, that's one thing I, I feel the, if there's one fear of the laser industry is that it get a little convoluted by some of the um, startups and other companies that are just kind of getting their feet wet in laser cutting, not really understanding the terminology process, uh, maybe the science behind it. Uh, next week with Wednesdays with Walker, we're actually going to go over how a CO2 laser works. Uh, we're going to get a little magic school bus with it. We're going to explore the laser just a touch. And all the little things that might not make sense why something works, why something operates the way it does, we're going to kind of... We're going to science the heck out of it. We're going to really science it up. Uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson will be with us next yeah. week. He'll be talking all about science and stars and lasers. I'm excited. Um, you're excited too. He had a cancel this week, but um, he assured us that next week he'll stop by and talk a little he science. He's at my party. So. He's he'll a busy here. guy. Busy guy. We love him. Okay, so um, again, we have the Muse giveaway contest. Uh, Please, everyone submit. Even if you just submit two seconds with your muse, uh, get a second muse, get a third muse. Um, you know, wh what wouldn't you need to do with, with another <laughs> muse? That was very awkward. Uh, but please submit a contest. Follow the link below. We'll have a link uh, below here and uh, to uh, what we have on Facebook as well. Yeah, so we'll have a link on Facebook and below this video. Uh, make sure you check that out. Um, again, we always want to be better. We always want to be the best company we can be. We take your feedback very seriously. So much change has happened, even in just the last 90 days, coming from these surveys. If you have a moment to fill out the survey, it takes four minutes and 32 seconds on average as of this morning. If you have four minutes and 32 seconds and want your favorite laser company to be even better, please help us out. Let us we'll know. Links down below again. It's all down here, down somewhere in the, we're not very good weathermen. Okay, what else we got? Okay, we still have a weekly contest. Uh, we have a bunch of people submitting to it. Uh, we're really, really thrilled by how many people are responding to the weekly contest. Again, you can win a uh, lens package or $250 credit towards your next purchase, uh, which is a great deal. Again, everything Walker talked about earlier with the different uses of lenses, what a great way to get another tool for your laser by just submitting uh, to the weekly contest. Yeah, it's more fun. Okay, so then uh, Walker will be doing some more seasons of, uh, sorry, some more uh, weekly builds uh, that'll be coming up this yeah. week. What are we we'll, doing? We'll uh, what do are we doing weekly this week? build? Uh, we'll photo, photo ornaments. Oh, photo ornaments. So you can take your uh, yearly um, uh, Christmas pictures and be able to put those in ornaments uh, for your Christmas tree. Yeah. So a little something you can do year for year with the kids. Uh, and don't forget, year for year, uh, it is the season of making. Uh, and again, we'll be giving a thousand dollars off all pro machines. Uh, just give us a call. We also have a bunch of, uh, you know, open box machines, the machines that uh, were barely touched. Uh, a couple of refurbs. Like if you're looking for a deal on a laser, give us a call. We have something for you. I assure you. Um, what else we have? Uh, okay, so next week we're going to talk about, like I said, the science of lasers and how lasers are used in uh, classrooms and maker spaces and kind of like the education behind it. Uh, don't worry, we'll make it nice and fun and, uh, and educational as well. Uh, second topic we're going to talk about with about water. Best, pra yeah. best practices using your laser design, all that. So like, uh, like uh, what's an example? Like what you got a roll of right there? So we have a huge thing of masking tape. This is essential. Like this is one of our most prized possessions in the yes. office and one of our favorite tools is the big roll of masking tape. I had no idea this existed. Yeah, and once we got one, it was our it was our favorite. So we'll talk about a bunch of uh, uh, practices, tips and techniques, just little things that you can use to be the best at your using your laser. Um, many times you buy a guitar and you can see every chord that's played, they can show you exactly how to strum, but it really takes uh, an expert to sit down with you and teach you how to feel and teach you how to like read music and do a few other things and that's what we'll do next week a little bit with Walker. Uh, last thing we're gonna do is everyone's favorite thing with the laser, alignment. alignment. Ugh. But don't worry, we got a few things to make alignment much, much easier. 
uh, we're gonna do it. Uh, what we do? We're using Lime in about five minutes. Yeah, about no five minutes. Like, and once you see it done in five minutes, and you see how you can do it in five minutes, and the benefits of keeping your um, uh, laser aligned, i.e., doing even if it doesn't seem out of line, just tweaking it, just getting it in perfect alignment, is gonna help so much. Not only in consistency of your cuts, but consistency across your laser bed. So you have the same the same engraving from the top corner to the bottom corner. No, nothing's worse than finishing a job and realizing that that bottom right corner is not just a little out of alignment oh it's the worst it's so frustrating break it out ruin the project yeah there's nothing i mean burning through material and burning through uh, objects is probably the uh, the hardest part uh, with doing this uh, we've gone extremely long today with um, Wednesday's book. We've gone about 20 minutes over, but we appreciate all the questions. Uh, it doesn't even feel like we went 50 minutes. It feels like we're here about 15. I'm so sure. uh, please come in. Uh, join us next week. Uh, we'll be here on we'll oh, Friday. Friday. I think I just on there. That was that. That was. Uh, we'll be Sorry, here Friday. We'll be here Friday for a one-hour build. One-hour right? build with me and. Uh, be under an hour. We'll, yeah. we'll keep it in about 20 minutes. We're sorry about this going so long. Hopefully a lot of people had a chance to log in. Yeah. Again, uh, next week we'll be going over uh, those three topics. We'll be doing it uh, centered around the Pro Series lasers, so you can see a little bit of a different setup next week, um, and we hope to see you then. So uh, for Nick and Walker, keep making. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Yay!